Hello, class, and welcome back to AP Computer Science Principles. Uh, I am Professor Cunningham, and today we are going to take another step forward in our knowledge of code and coding um, by looking at how we can now store letters as numbers and then put those numbers into binary so that they can be transmitted between computers. But first, you've probably already noticed over to my side here that I have a series of numbers up on the board. Now, this is a, an activity I do with my students every single year. No explanation. I put numbers such as these up onto the board, and I give them a few minutes, however long they want, to try to figure it out. I don't even necessarily make it part of the regular curriculum, just as a sort of bonus exercise. So before I give the answer, which I'm sure many of you have already figured out, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about what code actually is and why we call it coding, because it turns out that's not imaginative. That is a very literal word for a very literal process. So when we talk about codes, we are talking about translation. In this case, from letters to numbers, and those numbers can then be translated into binary. Check my earlier videos on how to do that. Anything that can be transferred into binary can be transmitted from a computer to another computer, which can then be decoded by the other side, assuming they both know the language. Now, in this particular case, you've probably figured out that the numbers represent letters based on their position in the alphabet, yeah? Eight would mean the eighth letter of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So once we know the code, whether we figured it out ourselves or whether we got it from someone else, we now know how to take those letters, change them into numbers, and then change them back to letters so that we can code and decode the message. So here we have the number substitution cipher that I used to make my hello world message. A is one, B is two, C is three, etc. It's very simple, very easy to understand, but there are a couple of big problems with it right away. First off, imagine I send you a message that says one, two. Well, how do you know whether I meant one, two, which would be A, B, or perhaps I meant L, and this could happen many times per word and it could make things very confusing. Um, you'll notice that when I did my original code, I did put spaces between each two digits to make it a little bit easier to see which individual letters were where, but computers don't work like that. A computer does not recognize a space. If there are a bunch of spaces between a zero and a one, it's only going to count the zero and the one. Everything has to be done in binary. So the way I got around that for my code is I took all the one digit numbers and just put a zero in front of them so that every single number had exactly two digits. And that way, even if I didn't put the spaces in, you'd probably eventually be able to figure out that each two digits made one letter. And that's all well and good. But even with that problem solved, there's still a lot that this code can't do. It can certainly send basic messages back and forth, no problem. But I see no way to do a lowercase letter, for example. I see no way to do any punctuation. I see no way of determining spaces between words. We're just going to get one big long string of letters, and it'll be up to us to try to cut it apart into the words. So there are a lot of improvements that we can make to this model in order to make a code to translate letters into numbers in a more sort of organized way that gives us more options. And thankfully, we don't have to do that work. It's already been done for us. This is the translation guide for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, or ASCII. It's a very common code that almost every computer knows, and it can take a much wider variety of letters, numbers, and symbols, and put them into, as you can see, three different bases of numbers. We've got our normal decimal. We've got binary, so we don't have to do that on our own, thankfully. And of course, we've got hex, which I don't believe we've talked about on this channel yet, but we will cover hexadecimal in a future video, I promise. For now, don't worry too much about it and focus on the first column where it says symbol and the binary column. Those are really the two important ones for now. So if I wanted to spell my name, Rob, in binary using ASCII, I would start by finding R, 
and noting that that is 1010010. Now, I want the second letter of my name to be lowercase, so I will find that the ASCII number for O, lowercase, is 111, which translates to 1101111. Again, notice that all of these have seven bits per symbol. So you don't need to use spaces or anything to understand where one symbol ends and the next one begins. Lowercase b is a 98, which is represented 1100010. So with this table, I can convert my name or any word or most of the punctuations into binary, which can then be transmitted to another computer and translated back as a text message or whatever. And here's one more challenge for you. In the description of this video, I went ahead and put a link to a table where you can translate into binary via ASCII. If you don't want to do it by hand, I will also include a link to an automatic translator. Put your name in binary in the comments, and I'll see you next time.